Now we are ready to discuss the specifications of an amplifier. And the specifications describe the performance of the amplifier or the characteristics of that amplifier. For a VLSI designer, the specifications are the design objectives, while for a component engineer, the specifications are the characteristics that describe the behavior of the amplifier. The most important spec of an amplifier is the gain. And the gain basically tells us the amplification factor, which means how much the output is different than the input. The gain usually is a function of frequency, so we would express the gain using the transfer function. Then we can express the gain in the S domain as A of S will equal to V out of S over the I of S. We can convert the transfer function to the frequency response simply by replacing S with J omega. Then we can say that A of J omega will equal to V out of J omega over V I of J omega. This is the frequency response which tells us how is the gain varies as a function of the frequency omega, where omega here is radiant per second. The frequency response is a complex function, which means that it has a magnitude and a phase. We can break this frequency response into two components, the magnitude, which is the absolute value of A of J omega, and the phase of a of j omega. So if we would like to know the gain as a function of frequency, we have to have two plots. One plot will show the magnitude as a function of frequency, and the second plot will show us the phase as a function of frequency. The second spec of an amplifier is the supply voltage and the supply voltage is used to turn on the transistors within the amplifier. So if this is the amplifier that we have been discussing then we must have at least one supply voltage that is connected to the amplifier we can call it VDD. However, many analog circuits will also require us to use another supply voltage that is negative in value, and that would be minus VSS. Not all electronic circuitries require two supply voltages. These supply voltages are used to bias the amplifier or the transistors within that amplifier. As technology improves, these supply voltages are lower for many reasons. One of them is the thickness of the gate becomes smaller and the voltage drops to minimize the power. And also the length of the channel is smaller. So you would like to make sure that the voltage from the drain to the source of the amplifier is not large enough to break down the transistor. The next important spec is what we call the DC power dissipation. The DC power dissipation is basically the power consumed by the amplifier, which are supplied by the DC supply voltages. So we can state that it is a function of the bias DC current and the supply voltage. So if you see here, this is the amplifier with the two supply voltages. Each supply voltage will supply the amplifier with current. The VDD will supply the amplifier with IDD, while the minus VSS will supply the amplifier 
with ISS. Then the total power supplied by these two sources equal to the total power absorbed or consumed by the amplifier. Then we can say that the power dissipated will equal to VDD IDD, that is the power supplied by the first source, plus VSS ISS, which is the power absorbed by the second source. The next important spec is what we call the input impedance and the output impedance. Now, if this is the amplifier, then looking into the amplifier, there is an impedance. This impedance controls the current that is going into the amplifier. Calculating Zn, the input impedance, is very easy. Zn, as a function of S, will equal to VI of S, which is the input voltage, over II of S. It can be easily calculated, and it can be easily measured in the lab. The output impedance is the impedance looking into the output of the amplifier. We're going to call it Z out. And Z out can be calculated using many techniques. One of them is the Thevenin technique, where we can say that Z out as a function of S will equal to V out open circuit over I out short circuit. And it can also be calculated using the test voltage and the test current method. Or there are other methods that you can use to calculate Z out. The next important spec is what we call the input voltage swing and the output voltage swing. This is the amplifier. In this amplifier, we are applying an, an input signal. We would expect to have an, an output signal at the output. The range of the input voltage, how high and how low the input voltage can swing, is restricted by the input stage of the amplifier. And also, the range of the output voltage, how high the output voltage and how low the output voltage swings, is restricted by the output stage of the amplifier. Let me show you an example. Let's assume that we are going to increase the input voltage. So the input voltage will swing kind of high at the input. We would expect the output voltage to swing also at the output with a bigger magnitude. However, it is possible that the output voltage will clip at the top or it will clip at the bottom or it will clip at the top and the bottom. Now, the question is, where did the clipping occur, or who caused the clipping? Well, the clipping could occur at the input. So, at the input, there is transistors. These transistors may shut off, and if the voltage goes too high and the transistors shut off, then the output voltage will be clipping because there is no input. Also, the transistor at the input may shut off if the voltage drops too low. Then the output will have a clipping at the bottom. Also, the clipping may occur at the output stage because the voltage goes so high, then the transistor at the output stage shuts off so the output voltage clips at the top. Or the output voltage drops too low that causes the transistor at the output to shut off, then the output voltage clips at the bottom. 
In summary, the input stage has a restricted range for the voltage, and the output stage has a restricted range for the voltage. The voltage cannot swing above and below a bounded range at the input and the output. Otherwise, a clipping may occur.